All right, so today we'll be talking about Max Turner. Not many people know about Max Turner, but he was the author of a book called The Ego and Its Own, or a more literal translation from its German title, would be The Unique Individual and Their Property. Uh, we'll be discussing some of the key ideas that come from the book and about Max Turner's philosophy in general. Turner's philosophy is usually called egoism. He claims that the egoist is someone who rejects the pursuit of being a devotee to a great idea, a good cause, a doctrine, a system, a lofty calling, and that the egoist has no political positions. He claims that the egoists live themselves out and that they do not care about how well or ill humanity may fare thereby. According to Stirner, humans are driven by egoism in the sense that they are self-interested. He finds that we as individuals should act in the ways we see fit without any sort of restriction. Stirner says that I am everything to myself and I do everything on my account. Or he also says nothing matters more than me. <laughs> Egoism rejects all forms of constraints and these constraints include the state, social conventions, laws, moral codes and religion. Even these actions that we think are beneficial to others or as selfless acts are seen as having a selfish motive. Sure, egoism can accept these selfless acts because it could say that, you know, these behaviors, uh, benefits and individuals self-image. Things such as the notion of the state, property as a right, natural rights and the notion of society, these are just spooks in our minds according to Stirner. And according to Stirner, in his book, The Ego and Its Own, there are three stages of the human experience or three stages of the individual's life. These three stages are made up of the realism, idealism and egoism stages. So he begins the first part of the egoism and its own with a dialectical structure based on individual stages of life, which are the childhood, youth and adulthood stages. The first stage is the realistic stage of childhood. Children are constrained or limited to material and natural forces, such as their parents in this stage. And then freedom from such constraints will be achieved with what Stirner calls the self-discovery of the mind. As children discover their mind, as they explore their mind, they also find ways to get across these limits. They become more determined and more cunninger and of course more naughty. Then next comes the idealistic stage of youth and along with it comes these new internal sources of constraints or limits because the individual becomes enslaved once again, poor people. What do they become enslaved to? They become enslaved to the spiritual forces of conscience and reason. Then adulthood comes along and so does a more developed egoism arises. Now we're talking about the egoistic stage, the adulthood stage. And here individuals can then escape the material and spiritual limits and they can learn to value their satisfaction above anything else. Stirner sees this dialectic of individual growth as similar to historical development. And as we had said earlier, there are three stages of individual growth. So realism, idealism and egoism. And the same can be said for historical development. So in this case, uh, so in the case of, you know, realism, we can look at the ancient and pre-Christian world. And then for the idealistic stages, we can observe the modern or Christian world. And then for the egoistic stages, we can try to observe the future world. Of course, he talks about these historical developments and Sterner tries to explain what each stage of these developments bring or what they have done so far, or what would happen. Sterner views the modern world as a failure to outgrow these religious modes of thinking. Despite the modern world making these absurd claims to have escaped the hands of religious thought, and while Stirner does not talk much about the ancient world, he does claim that the ancient world contributes to the genesis of modernity. He says that the historical development of modernity largely revolves around the Reformation period. Now, just to explain what this Reformation was, 
I will read this paragraph from the National Geographic website that sums it up quite well. So, the Protestant Reformation was a religious reform movement that swept through Europe in the 1500s and it resulted in the creation of a branch of Christianity called Protestantism, a name used collectively to refer to the many religious groups that separated from the Roman Catholic Church due to differences in doctrine. So, this beginning of modernity due to the Reformation, this, this shift from Catholic to Protestant, according to Stirner, is not a liberating movement at all, was not a liberating movement at all. Instead, it's an extension, an am amplification of the domination of spirit. This reformation uh, increases religious control over individuals because it refuses to recognize the difference between the spiritual and the sensual. The reformation period had given even more power to religious belief and it made, a more per it made it a more personal thing. It made religious religion a more personal thing. It had created an internal conflict between natural desires and religious conscience. This reformation only served to further enslave Europeans under the spiritual ideology. In the words of Max Turner himself, the Protestants has put a man in the position of a country governed by the secret police. The spy and eavesdropper, conscience, watches over every no motion of the mind, and all thought and action is for it a matter of conscience, that is, police business. So the Reformation period had extended religious control. It increased the bond between individuals and religion. It never liberated anyone, but it just expanded that realm of religious control. And Stirner sees the modern world as something that creates religious modes of thinking rather than getting rid of such modes of thinking. And then we have the egoistic future, uh, which is obviously forward-looking. And Stirner seems to be hopeful of this egoistic future. He seems to be a bit optimistic. Maybe, he claims, uh, we could be liberated from the domination of religion. Stirner views this developing historical relationship between the individual and society as a series of parallels that are made to show egoism as the answer to a more advanced civilization. So, in order to be uh, to have a more advanced civilization, according to Stirner, he sees the answer within egoism. Stirner sees this concept called ownness to also be a feature of a more advanced state of human personal and historical development. Stirner describes this ownness as ownness includes in itself everything own and brings to honor again what Christian language dishonored. But ownness has not any alien standard either as it is not in any sense an idea like freedom, morality, humanity, etc. It is only a description of the owner. That's in the words of Stirner himself. Egoism is properly understood with what Stirner calls ownness. And this ownness is to own yourself. It is to rule yourself, to govern over yourself. And this ideal works from both sides too. So it's not just to escape being controlled by others and other things, but to, to, but to also escape being dragged along by our appetites, by our desires too. So what Sterner is saying is that we should create an ideal of emotional detachment from our appetites and ideas and that this ownness is seen as the most important good that conquers all other goods. Stirner seems to value this individual self-mastery above everything else. So that pretty much sums up that part. From here on, I just want to explain some of Stirner's thoughts on specific things, you know, to suit that concept of food for thought thing we have going on here. So the first thing I want to bring up is Stirner's view on the self. And Stirner views the self as something that is not fully comprehensible. He calls the self a creative nothing and that the self is just an endpoint to language. For example, if I call you John, it's not because you are a John. It just means you, for which I have no other words. And this is a sort of endpoint for our world of phrases. 
okay fine the self is not comprehensible and it is an endpoint to language but what is this creative nothing that max turner speaks about well the creative nothing is max turner's speaking a uh, way of speaking about himself uh, this creative nothing is max turner's way of speaking about himself but as a non conceptual thing and that non conceptual thing transcends the realms of language and words or as max turner quotes i equal i or the nothing or uh, out of which i myself create everything as creator <coughs> we could say that if we are conceptually nothing then what we are doing is that we are creating ourselves from our non conceptual existence by using conceptual manners such as lingual written symbolic matters and we use the conceptual manners that best describe our non conceptual experience with the world every conceptual determination is a conceptual idea that tries to determine what we are but these things cannot fully conceptualize what any of us actually is now somebody might ask okay then what the hell am i come on man so sterner would say that you are anything you are not something we can conceptualize not a word um, not a symbol you're not an idea but that you are much more than these things you are unique or oh, you know as tyler durden would say you are not your job you are not how much money you have in the bank you are not the car you drive you are not the contents of your wallet you are not your bloody khakis you are the old singing old dancing crap of the world right man the more you get into philosophy and mature as a person the more sense the movie fight club makes but anyways we're not here to talk about fight club sterner also has this concept of the egoistic property too and the egoistic property it rejects moral constraints uh moral constraints and restraints on how an individual would obtain and use things and people he says that property comes by using might or as he quotes whoever knows how to take to defend the thing to him belongs property what i have in my power that is my own so long as i assert myself as holder i am the proprietor of the thing he also says I do not step shyly back from your property but look upon it always as my property in which I respect nothing pray do the like with what you call my property <laughs> but I love this quote I love this quote by Max Turner might is a fine thing and useful for many purposes for one goes further with a handful of might than with a bag full of right all right before we start to wrap things up I just want to cover one topic and that is about spooks. You might have seen a lot of memes on Sterner and most of them are about these spooks, right? Well, Sterner uh, views most commonly accepted social norms such as the state, the property as a right, natural rights and the notion of society in general to be illusions or spooks like a ghost in our minds. Sterner claims that the individuals are its reality. and he claims that he wants to abolish not only the state but also so society as an institution responsible for its members all right i think we can wrap it up i try to make this as brief as possible and give you key ideas about sterner's philosophy if you did like this then please do subscribe do like this do give me a comment and please share this as well and i hope we can meet again and i hope i can give you some more awesome things to think about too Uh, thanks for listening and if you would like to hear more like this then please do stick around see you guys